Shalom family. Today we're going to be comparing the Hebrew Masoretics as well as the Septuagint. All modern translation that we have right now from the 1611 to KJV, even Hallelujah Scriptures, NIV, all modern translation that we have, we get it from the Hebrew Masoretics. But the Septuagint, which is uh, over a thousand years older than the Hebrew Masoretic, where we will be proving that it's more accurate than the Hebrew Masoretic with what we get from when we read our KJV as of today and even um, Hallelujah Scripture, Cypher, or all the um, scarred name Bibles as well. So let's get into it. Let's compare some of these New Testament quotes to the, the Old Testament using the the Hebrew Masoretics as well as the Septuagint. All right. First scripture we're going to go to, we're going to go to Luke. We're going to go to Luke chapter 4. And we're going to go to verse 18 and verse 19. All right, here we go. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He have sent me to heal the broken hearted, to preach deliverance to the captive and to recover the sight to the blind. And pay attention to that part, to recover sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Now, let's go to where our Messiah is quoting this from, where Christ is quoting this from. He's quoting from Isaiah chapter 61. Let's go there. Now, we're using the Hebrew Masoretics because this is where what the KJV got their translation from. OK. All right. And it says the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings. Unto the meek, he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to open opening of the prisons to them that are bound. Verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. Now notice it says nothing about giving sight to the blind, but this is what our Messiah said when he quoted this verse. But now let's go to the Septuagint and see what it says. Okay, so we're going to Isaiah and the Septuagint. That's Isaiah 61. Okay, verse 1. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. He has sent me to preach glad tidings to the poor, to heal the, bro the broken in heart, to proclaim liberty to the captive, and to recover sight to the blind, to, de to declare the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of recompense to comfort all that mourn. Notice. It said it exactly, the Septuagint said it exactly like our Messiah said in the New Testament. Now, why didn't it say it in the Hebrew Masoretics, the KJV, what we just read? Well, we know that the Septuagint is over a thousand years older. They had no reason to to do anything to the text. Christ wasn't even on earth at that time. It's more accurate. The Septuagint is just more accurate. And let's just keep going. Next scripture we'll go to, we'll go to, we'll go to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 6. Hebrews 1. Verse six, and this is one of my favorite scriptures. And it says, and again, when he bring in the first begotten 
into the world, he said, and let all the angels of God worship him. Now, it's quoting from Deuteronomy 32, verse 43. Let's go there. Let's go there. On in the KJV, and we already know it's translated from the Hebrew Masoretic. So we're going to Deuteronomy 32, verse 43. Okay. And it reads, Rejoice, O you nation, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants and will render vengeance to his adversaries and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. Notice it said nothing about the angels worshiping him in Deuteronomy 32, 43. And you will not find it in the law. Not that I know of. You will not find it in the Hebrew Masoretic. But you go to the Septuagint. Go to the Septuagint in Deuteronomy 32. Let's go there now. Okay, we're going to Deuteronomy and the Septuagint. Chapter 32. And we're going to verse 43. Let's see what it says. And it says, Rejoice, you heavens, with him, and let all the angels of God worship him. Rejoice, you Gentiles, with his people, and let all the sons of God strengthen themselves in him. For he will avenge the blood of his sons, and he will render vengeance and recompense justice to his enemy, and will reward them that hate him. And the Lord shall purge the land of his people. Notice what, it's, notice what it says. Now it's right there. It says the angels worship him. Let all the angels worship him. Just like Hebrews said. Now, what we have to understand is around the time the Messiah walked the earth. The common spoken language was Greek. We know at that time, the Romans was in that land for at least 200 years before the Messiah was born. Around 100 to 200 years. Of course, their language would be dominant at that time. And if you study the Septuagint, when it was translated, the Hebrews that translated, they was excited when they translated it. The 70 Hebrews that translated it, they was excited because they said now their brothers who cannot speak Hebrew anymore can understand the scriptures and a language that they speak. This is why it was important to translate it in Greek at the time those 70 Hebrews translated the Septuagint by Alexander. We have to know this, brothers and sisters. Okay? So it wouldn't be no surprise that the Septuagint is more accurate than the Hebrew Masoretic. We see the Messiah quoting it exact. All right. Next scripture I like to go to. Let's go to let's go to Galatians. Let's go to Galatians. Galatians three. Verse 13. And it reads, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us, for it is written, Curse is everyone that hang on a tree. Now, let's go where Paul is quoting from. Paul is quoting from Deuteronomy 21. Now, we're in the Hebrew Masoretics, Deuteronomy 21. 
Okay, that's verse 23. And it reads, His body shall not remain all night upon the tree, but thou shalt in any wise bury him that day. For he that is hanged is accused of God, that the lamb be not defiled, which the Lord thy God give thee for inheritance. Now, of course, you read this, you can get the point. It's basically saying the same thing, but in a sort of a different way, you know. But let's go into the Septuagint and see how it's said. Okay. So we have the Septuagint. And we're going to Deuteronomy 21. And that's verse 23. And by the way, I'm using Bible study tools where you can um, select to, to read the Septuagint version. Okay. Verse 23. His body shall not remain all night upon the tree, but you shall be, you shall by all means bury it in that day. For everyone that is hanged on a tree is cursed of God. And you shall by no means defile the land with the Lord thy God give thee for inheritance. See, it says it quite different in the Septuagint. Just, just to give you that point. All right. So now let's go back into the KJV. And we're going to go to, to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 7. Isaiah 7 verse 14. And it reads, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Okay, so that's how it says it in the Hebrew Masoretic. Let's see how it says it in the Septuagint. By the way, which was a thousand years before the Hebrew Masoretic, years before the Messiah was born. So it wouldn't be no reason to insert anything at that time. So let's go to Isaiah and the Septuagint. Okay. We got Isaiah chapter 7. Okay, verse 14. And hear what it says. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a son. Behold, a virgin shall conceive in the womb and shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. Notice in the Septuagint, it says, a virgin shall conceive in the womb. This is a miracle, people. I'll just leave it at that.